Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. It is me, Duke CT, and tonight we rampage as I, Duke CT, review the first ever AEW rampage. And honestly, this was a very, very good first episode. In fact, I would say great, even as there was no bad matches. Each match felt important the crowd was hot it was um, honestly this was a great way a great foot in the door the first step into this new aew rampage era and honestly i gotta say the negative there's only one real negative the four-man booth and honestly the four guys here henry mark henry chris jericho taz and excalibur they're all good and sometimes they kind of work but honestly it's a mess I think Mark Henry, um, you know, he was fine. I think Greg Jericho was a little excitable, but I think he reigned in a bit, a little bit uh, later on in the show. Taz and Stalber, they were really good. I think Mark Henry as a backstage, uh, you know, backstage interview would be better. And Chris Jericho, Taz and Stalber, you know, rotate every other week. You know, make it a three-man booth. I'm making a two-man booth would be even better. Jericho and Excalibur would be great. Just that's just me. Anyway, let's get into the first match. That is the Impact World Championship as Kenny Omega defends against Christian Cage. This was a really good match. I didn't think these. I didn't this. I didn't think this match was gonna be like really good as it was, but it was. It started out slow, but it started. Out, it but it picked up as both men have great chemistry with each other. Both men have. You know, the uh, action was on point. Everything just worked perfectly in this match. And it was like teetering back and forth. Who is going to actually win this match? Who was going to actually win? You didn't know. As it just seemed like it was going back and forth, back and forth. You know, heck, after a couple of V triggers, it looked like Kenny Omega was going to pick up the victory. But no, you know, Captain Charisma kicked out. And then you had uh, Christian doing that level frog splash. He hit it, all of it. And then one, two, I'm like, oh, kicked out. It was just really going back and forth. But the finish of the match, as the Young Bucks, you know, sneaking down the ring with that steel chair, looks like he was going to, uh, as Omega was going to hit that, uh, <laughs> the one wing angel on that chair to take down Christian. But no, Christian reversed it. He hits the kill shot on the chair that looked just nasty. Just like, ooh, man, that did not look comfortable to Oh man, but overall though, this was a great match as Christian Cage becomes the new Impact World Champion and TNA Champion as well. Fun fact, Christian, they say, oh, he's a, a former Impact Champion. No, he wasn't. He was a former NWA Champion when TNA was and the NWA were together. But no, this is his first reign as the Impact slash TNA World Champion and it's well-deserved in his career. He has done Great stuff here. So congratulations to Christian. It's a honestly what a great match. This was honestly and quite honestly, I hope that I don't know what they're gonna do for that all out the uh, uh pay per view match because I feel like man they gave this stuff for free. I don't know what the next stipulation. How are they going to up the ante for the next match? But I hopeful they can because this was a really good. These two really was just great, and I can't wait to see more. Uh, from them, but uh, like I said, you know, like I said before, I want to see what the next step. They need to ramp it up as uh, Kenny Omega, you know, defending his AEW title. I think there might be a stipulation involved. Maybe it's something with ladders or something. Who knows? Anyway, overall, great match. I give it a. If I want to give a rating, I give it like a, uh, a eight out of ten. Good stuff here. I think the commentator just. Told it back a bit, but overall, the match, the crowd, very good stuff. Next up, Miro versus Fugel Duo Soul. Man, <laughs> this was a squash match, but you, you had to believe that Fugel Del Soul was going to win. You thought he was going to win by count at first, as you know, Fugel hits uh, Miro immediately with the DDT. Like, just three consecutive Tenero DDTs, just one, two. Like, and then he was like, and then, you know, he gets back in the ring. And then he hits one, thought he was going to come back. Yeah, but yet Miro comes in, just, you know, doing some nice, you know, he counters the you know, the fourth 
Tornado DDT squashes him, hits uh, the big kick, and then he hits the game over. The sting, the accu, uh, the I don't know what they call it, uh, but that you know the camel clutch just reaches back and it was over. And Miro retains the TNT Championship. And um, Fugel Del Sol's contract to AEW was ripped apart. And there it is. And Miro goes away. And you know, Miro is like, yes, he is like, I, the Redeemer. And I love this character push. I love how he is. And this is a six title defense. I wonder if he actually will move beyond uh, Darby's ten title defenses. Who knows? But, but it looks like it's going to be a happy ending as Tony Khan comes out and Sammy Guevara, you know, come in. And gives him uh, uh, Fugio Del Sol an AEW contract. And the crowd, man, that was a great touching moment. Even though I'm not deep with uh, with Del Sol, a lot of people, you know, 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 people on Twitter were rooting for him and such and social media rooting for him. He has that connection. So he got that contract. And hey, he got the connection with the audience, which is always a good thing, man. And just a really good feel good moment. And then we get to our main event as you know, Britt Baker takes on Red Velvet. Red Velvet got a lot of booze, which is a shame because she usually is that baby, a good baby face and such. But man, Britt Baker, it reminds me so much of like, you know, the old days of like Jerry the King Lawler can't, Jerry the King Lawler couldn't get booed in Memphis or Bret Hart could not get booed in Canada. It's that type of stuff, you know. The baby face return and everything else. So, yeah. This was purely in uh, Britt Baker's backyard. And Velvet knew it. She worked She worked really well under this. And worked well under pressure. Both uh, had some really good chemistry with each other. I like the fact that Velvet just went after Baker's injured wrist. And just Velvet had it was just back and forth. Back and forth. You didn't know who was going to win. And... It was really good, and I honestly think this was probably Britt Baker's best match as her being champion. And honestly, they and honestly, I hope Red Velvet gets another shot down the road because I think she would be a really good pick to become uh, an AEW champion or something like that. Because I think the crowd would love, you know, I think she could get that crowd or her, with her again. So I, who knows? But yeah. Uh, anyway, Rebel was ejected uh, from ringside. And Velvet hits uh, Baker with a super kick, and and uh, and then hits a huge moonsault, and but yet Miss Baker kicks out, and Velvet you know it looks like it was back and forth. It looks like oh she oh she uh, Velvet oh no she got the lockjaw. She was like oh well she's got to get she was about to get it, but the arm and wrist was messed up. Then um, you know Velvet had uh, the lockjaw too, but she. Reversed that and it was going back and forth, but then Baker reversed that and used her good arm to apply the hole and pick up the victory and retains the AEW Women's Championship. And I give this a 8 out of 10 as well, which is really good stuff here. The crowd really helped this match. Both were these matches, Mel Jordan, the matches were really good here. And after the match, Chris Stantler prevent, tried to prevent. Britt Baker from stomping Velvet onto the title belt, but the returning Jamie Hayter returning to AEW and helping Britt Baker take both of them out. So the the person uh, Britt Baker was talking about like uh, you know a couple weeks ago, or just like last week, uh, like saying I need a you know someone to watch my back. Well, let's say Jamie uh, pick up that phone call and now she is in AEW to watch Britt Baker's back. So, yeah. So, my question is, is this concept a stable now? Is uh, Jamie Hayter and Rebel and Britt Baker, is that a stable? Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, I honestly um, uh, really love this, uh, the whole show. This is a great way to end the first episode and... Who knows what's going to happen next week? Because it next AEW uh, rampage is going to be in Chicago, entitled "The First Dance," and well, <laughs> get I mean Darby has been pointing saying he's the best in the world, 
and such. And, you know, he keeps knocking on that door. And who knows? Somebody might enter. Who knows? Maybe it can be just some punk. Anyway, overall, I really enjoyed this uh, AEW Rampage first show. Uh, great stuff. Highly recommend this thing. And I can't, I honestly can't wait for next week. And until then, ladies and gentlemen, if you want me to continue to do AEW Rampage reviews, um, leave a comment, so, yeah, leave something in the comment section below. Anyway, this is Duke CT here. Peace and love. I'll see y'all when I see y'all. Later.